love how things work out and the timing of things. I was playing around with some macrame when a friend's daughter got engaged and my joy is to be able to bless brides with making their wedding favors. So I offered to make a keychain a wedding favor for them. At the same time, we are uh, holding a women's retreat at our church and we needed a craft for them to make. So I am doing both of those and today I show you how you can make a macrame keychain. You can make one or two, but you can also make tons and it is easy and very, very economical. Okay, here's everything you're going to need to macrame your keychain. We are going to use cotton twine. You can get this simply from the hardware store. You can order it online, but this is just simply cotton twine. You are going to want to cut four pieces 30 inches long. We're going to need a keychain snap, and this is a half inch on the inside diameter. I have the link down below to where I got that off of Amazon. It comes with the D-ring, so you're going to want to use that D-ring if we're going to make yours a wristlet. So don't throw those uh, the D-rings away. You're going to want um, a bead. A, a, the smallest size should be 11 millimeters, so um, I'd say 11 to 14 millimeter bead piece of floral wire, some straight pins, and I am on a piece of foam board right now. Um, that is what I have found is the best work surface. If you're going to make a little tag, get your tags ready. Um, you can do wooden ones. I've seen those online. This is leather um, that I have burnt um, on these. And at the end of this video, I have a section of how I did that. So we'll first do the keychain and then we'll do the tags, but let's get started. Take your cotton twine, one piece at a time. We're gonna fold it in half, put it through the, the end of your snap and put the tails through that loop. So we're going to do that with each of the pieces of twine. And since this does swivel around, just um, try to make sure that your um, knots are all on the same side. So I'm gonna show you what I mean. This is uh, correct. We have both of them facing away. If you flip it over, the, the knot side is on the other side. So just make sure all of your pieces are facing the same direction. And on this one, I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate what it is to put a tag on it in case you're doing these for like a wedding favor. I um, did these for a Bible study gift. I'm doing it for our ladies group gift. So you can um, add whatever you want. So I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate putting um, the tag on. And so you need to uh, put the tag on now before we start macrame. And this is where the floral wire will come into play. Just thread the, the string through the wire so that you can get it through the tag. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to put the ends of your string through there. And so now we attach that string to the snap. So I'm gonna pull it through the back and I'm just going to drop it through the center of those and pull up. And so see there you have the tag will be off to the side. So now take your straight pins and just pin your um, snap to your board so it's nice and stable. And I just, uh, this last weekend, got done teaching this to a group of 100 people. And so luckily for you, I have fresh in my mind all of the questions they asked me. So hopefully this will be a blessing to you um, and you can succeed at this project. So we have eight strings, four of them um, hooked up there, but each of them have two, so you have eight strings. Put your other four out of the way. So we just have four strings in front of us. And if you lay them out, I'm going to refer to them. The inside one is number one, two, three, and four. So you're going to pick up number one, and we're going to hold that in your left hand. Pick up number two, and you're gonna bring it up, and you're going to drop it through that center uh, circle that was formed between the two strings. And that was one question. Do I go under, do I go over? Drop it through is the phrase that you're going to always wanna remember if you have to drop it through that center. The second one is, 
where do you hold this hand uh, for the right tension? If you're on this hand, um, if you're on the the side that we're working on right now, keep this hand down like at seven o'clock. So here we have six. Here we have seven. Keep it at seven, and then pull with your your uh, right hand. You're pulling that string, so it's just kind of a little bit tight. But keep this one at this angle. It might be more like at eight o'clock. So then that's wrap number one. Every wrap requires you to do it twice. So now you're going to bring it around and drop it through. So we're going to drop it through that center. Keep this one at about 7 or 8 o'clock and pull it. And now you have your first knot. And you throw that string aside. So that was string number two. This is string number three. We do the same thing. We bring it over. We drop it down and through pull it up, keep this one at an angle, and that makes your knot stand up on edge. That was wrap number one. We're going to drop it through again, and that's wrap number two. And now you put that string aside. This is your last string, with it, which is number four. So it's on the bottom, bring it up, and drop it through. So right here, it's sort of like you're just tying a little knot. So we're going to keep this one down at 7 o'clock, draw it up. We're going to uh, bring it over. You, I, I kind of twist my hand looking at that. It's, it's a muscle memory thing. I didn't realize I was doing it. So you just kind of twist your hand so that you can get that uh, to drop through the center. Keep this one tight. And there is your first row of your keychain. So now we're back. We have our four strings again, one, two, three, and four. And we have this one is number one. Put your new number one in your hand. Take your new number two, drop it through. Take your, again, that was wrap number one. Here is wrap number two. And throw that one aside. Pick up your next one, which is the third, third chord. Drop it through. And kind of just turn your hand a little bit so you can get your, your hole. And that was wrap number two. Last one on this strand. Drop it through. And drop it through. So there you have two rows. I'm going to go ahead and do row three. So you're going to do this three times on this side, and then we'll do it three times on this side. So let me go ahead and do row number three, and then I'll show you the other side. Okay, that's what you have at the end of the first section of, of the keychain. Now, string number one, two, three, and four, we start from the center and go out, one, two, three, and four. I put number one in my right hand. I pick up number two and I bring it up and I drop it through the center and pull it tight. Now this um, hand here is like at four to five o'clock and this is where some of the confusion because a lot of us are right-handed um, I it's it's a different motion so here I'm getting ready to do the second wrap you go over the wrap and you drop it through so basically you're going over and coming up from the bottom. It could be either way you need to come up and through that uh, hole. So that was chord number one. Let's see if we on chord number, I'm sorry, that was chord number two. So let's see on chord number three if we can explain it any better. So I'm holding number one here. We go over it and come up through that little hole. And so that's number wrap number one. Go over it and come up through that hole. Throw that one aside. The last chord is number four. Go over it, draw up, go over it, bring it up through that hole, and draw it up. We bring them all back down. Our new number one, we repeat. We're going to go over, bring it up, draw it. Here we go. And bring through. And 
and put that one outside. Okay, number one still in my hand. This is number four that we're doing. Okay, bring them all back down. My new number one. And we go for the third diagonal. And you can see this one still at, at this angle makes you, um, you have the nice tight rows. So cord number three is getting its turn to get wrapped or to do the wrapping. And cord number four. Okay, let's see what we have. There we are. So we have one, two, three, one, two, three. They're pretty close, um, uh, even here. If one is off a little, you can do some adjusting, but it really won't show up. I can assure you that this next thing that we're going to do, um, any tiny little mismeasurements will get hidden. So put the, the outside three on that side and the outside three on that side. You have the inner cords number one from this one and number one from this one so you take your floral wire again we're going to put the strings in the bent the bend of the wire take your bead and thread your strings through the center of that bead okay so now we're back to basically where we started we have uh, four and four and we're going to do the exact same thing. You're going to take cord number one that went through your bead and here we have two, three, and four and we are going to do the same exact motion. So wrap one, wrap two, wrap one, wrap two. And the last one here, remember you go over and drop it through is one, over and drop it through is two. And we do that for three rows. Okay, we have one, two, three, bead, one, two, three. So now I need to do the three on this side. I'm going to move those out of the way. I have number one that came through the bead is in my hand. And we wrap, we go around, come through the center. Keep this hand at about four to five o'clock and wrap at number two. Go back, new number one, and continue for row number two and three. Okay, we have one, two, three, one, two, three. And again, if they're close, this one looks like it's extending a little longer. Um, you can sh uh, scoot it up if you want, but it really won't matter because at this point, smooth them all out. Do one big full knot with all of them. Scoot it up to the bottom of your macrame to where it's kind of tight. And now pull each cord individually. So just hold on to your macrame with one hand and pull each individually. Trim them to be about two inches long. Take just a dog brush and fray out your tail. If you want to make tags um, for your keychain for like a wedding favor or like I said for a women's retreat that we're doing, you can um, do them on leather. So I'm using my uh, engraver here and I'm burning these onto these wristlets. And since I'm doing a mass production, I'm just going to quickly show you how I do this. I do 12 at a time. Take a little X-Acto knife and cut them apart. And I cut each one 10 inches, leaving a gap on each end. And these wristlets, they slip into the little D-ring. Here's one that I have done. So you need to have uh, cut your leather just right at a half inch so it can slip into your D-ring. Okay, after you have it cut, now we need to put the D-ring on. And so you just slide one end into the D-ring and fold it over um, probably a generous half inch. Just like that. Bring up the other side. Go 
a little more. There we go. Now we need to put a hole through all of these layers and I'm just using a leather punch that is the same diameter as the rivet. So there's our hole and here is the rivet that you just put the long end in one side, put the other. There's different length stems uh, to your rivets so just get one that matches the um, weight of your leather and once it, it snaps in, you can hear it snap in, then I tap it just a little bit on each side and then it is on there permanent. So there's how I do a wristlet. I am also doing these for wedding favors. So these are just uh, square tags. You can use leather. Um, you can, uh, I've seen them with wood discs and you just incorporate it into your uh, macrame. Okay, there it is. Like I said, I have done these as individual gifts, um, wedding favors. I love blessing brides by helping them with their wedding favors. This was uh, for our women's retreat. Uh, so if you have any questions while you're making yours, please let me know. I really uh, love making these. And as always, I appreciate you watching DIY on the house.